My name is Adeline. I grew up with my dad and mom, just the three of us. Recently, I decided to marry Philip, my boyfriend, and move out of the home I grew up in. I met Philip through mutual friends. He works for a well-known company in town and is often considered a top-notch professional. He's very responsible and kind. My parents were thrilled when they learned I'd be marrying him. With my marriage, mom seemed relieved that her years of parenting were coming to an end. It was as if this gave her the chance to refocus on her own life. Since I started elementary school, mom has been working as a chef at a nursing home. Cooking is her passion. Sometimes she would even serve her creative dishes at the nursing home she worked at. I've heard stories about how the residents eagerly awaited her meals every day. That's how delicious her cooking was. Praise never got to her head. She took cooking classes and was always learning. Mom had always been diligent about following her dream. Her dream was to have her own restaurant one day. Seeing people smile while eating her dishes brought her immense joy. She often said, I'd love to serve my dishes in a small restaurant when I'm older. Though she said it might remain just a dream, there was a hint of sadness in her eyes. But then, a twist of fate changed everything. Around the time I moved out after my wedding, unexpected news came mom's way. She and dad would often dine at a bar run by her friend's elderly parents. It was a quaint place with lovely conversations, meticulously prepared dishes, and select drinks that mom always raved about. But due to their old age and declining health, they decided to close the bar. It was in such a prime location, too good to be left unused. When they thought of renting it out to someone, mom's name was the top of the list. They believed that with her culinary skills and lovely personality, she would cherish and take care of the place. After discussions, they decided they wanted to pass the bar on to mom. When mom heard this, she was taken aback by the suddenness of it all. However, opportunities like this might never come again. She seemed to understand that if she missed this one, there might not be another. Mom decided to take over the bar from her friend's parents and start her own place. Dad was all for it and they worked together to create their dream bar. When their dream was finally becoming a reality, Mom was ecstatic. She paid attention to every little detail to ensure no regrets. Seeing the happiness on Mom's face, I felt sure the bar would be a hit. A few months later, everything was set to open. Mom's bar is a quaint spot that opens in the evening. There isn't a fixed menu. Instead, she serves the best items she gets her hands on that day, presenting them as creative cuisine. It felt like a great idea packed with Mom's dreams. Initially, I was worried about whether customers would come, but there was no need for concern. Mom's bright and sociable nature quickly drew in regulars. Above all, it was mom's cooking that brought the rave reviews, and word of mouth soon spread. Most of the customers were locals, but passers-by would also stop by and have a good time. The homely atmosphere was a hit, and the bar was busy every day. I visited the bar with Philip once. Philip loved mom's dishes, and he made a suggestion. The food is truly delicious. Would you consider using our vegetables? Philip's family owned a greengrocer. Having been in the business locally for a long time, they had a wide network and offered fresh produce. Philip proposed a contract between Mom's bar and his family's greengrocer. Fresh harvest grocers, right? That's a generous offer. I'd love to. With the contract, she'd get a regular supply of quality ingredients. Mom was thrilled at the prospect of making even better dishes. Soon enough, Mom and Philip's dad discussed the details over the phone, and a formal contract was agreed upon. Once everything was settled, a delivery of vegetables from Philip's family was sent over. All of them were vibrant and fresh. It was clear they were top quality. It might cost more than the supermarket, but serving such great produce will surely make the customers happy. Mom always prioritized seeing the smiles of her customers over profit. I'm glad you like them. Seeing mom content with the vegetables, Philip grinned, looking slightly embarrassed. Then one day, mother-in-law visited mom's store. Hmm, interesting. 
Without any greetings, she looked around as if assessing the place. It had been a while since they met during a formal introduction for the marriage, so Mom honestly didn't know much about her character. Despite feeling a bit annoyed by mother-in-law's scrutinizing look, Mom greeted her warmly. Oh, you're Philip's mother, right? Welcome. We really value and use the vegetables you supply. Thanks, was all mother-in-law replied, avoiding eye contact and frowning. Not understanding the sour expression, Mom offered her some water. Here's some water. I'll prepare a meal for you shortly. Please take a seat. However, mother-in-law stopped her with a gesture. No need. I just came to check out the place today. I was concerned whether our family's produce was properly being used in such a small establishment. Stunned by her arrogant attitude, Mom was at a loss for words. Seems like you have a good reputation here. That's nice, mother-in-law said with a sly grin. Mom just listened in silence. Well, it appears you're using our veggies properly. It would be a problem if you weren't. Oh, since I'm here, how about I book for 50 people? Um, as you can see, this is a small place, and I don't think we can accommodate 50 people. After making several snide remarks, she now proposed an impractical reservation. The eatery, with a few tables and counter seats, couldn't possibly fit 50 people. You think this tiny space can handle a big crowd? Then let's see your cooking skills. Pack them into lunchboxes. I'll order 50 for next Friday's lunch. Can you handle that? The mother-in-law's taunting challenge seemed to ignite mom's fighting spirit. Lunchboxes it is. I can definitely make 50 by next Friday. With that reply, the mother-in-law left with a sour look on her face. While mom had confidently accepted the challenge, she had never prepared such a large order before. I decided to lend a hand, knowing it'd be quite the task for one person. But mom was so skilled. I often felt she didn't even need my help. I just focused on packing the food so it looked as appetizing as possible. Before we knew it, we had only 10 minutes left to the mother-in-law's pickup time. We managed to create vibrant, tasty lunchboxes on time. This has to be perfect. I put my all into it. There's no way she can complain now. Mom looked really proud of her accomplishment. She had probably been planning the recipes for this day. I noticed several detailed recipe notes pinned up in the kitchen. Clearly, she was very dedicated to this task. But as soon as the noon hour approached, there was no sign of the mother-in-law. After waiting for 30 minutes past the pickup time, I called her to check in. Hello, we have the lunchboxes ready. Will you be coming to pick them up? If you're busy, we can deliver them for you. What she said next was utterly shocking. Oh dear, I completely forgot about the lunchboxes. I already had my lunch. Just cancel my order. Wait, we've already made them. We can't cancel now. At least pay for the cost? You can't be serious. Family shouldn't charge for cancellations. Anyway, I'm busy. She had not only forgotten her order, but now refused to pay. I was stunned, lost for words, when she abruptly hung up. Heartbroken, I told mom about the conversation. She looked devastated. I should have taken payment up front, and accepting an order for 50 was unrealistic. I shouldn't have let her provoke me. Mom seemed deeply upset by the hard work she put into those lunchboxes. It's not mom's fault. She simply kept her promise and made the order as requested. It's mother-in-law who's in the wrong here. It felt such a waste to dispose of these wonderful lunchboxes. Hoping against hope, I decided to call Philip. Philip, I'm sorry to disturb you at work. No worries, it's almost lunchtime anyway. What's up? Since it's almost lunchtime, I have a favor to ask. What happened? Well, mother-in-law had placed an order for 50 lunchboxes today, but she canceled at the last minute. I didn't want them to go to waste, so I was wondering if anyone at your office would want them. Hearing this, Philip let out a deep sigh. Ugh, I can't believe it. I'm really sorry for the trouble mother has caused. She's always been like this. We'll sell all those lunchboxes at my company. Can you bring them over? I could detect the anger in Philip's voice. Thank you. It's such a waste to throw them away. We can give them out for free, and if there are any leftovers, you can bring them back home. As promised, I delivered the lunchboxes to Philip's office. 
Mom, still reeling from the lunch incident, felt too upset to continue with the evening shift. As she saw customers outside looking at the closed for today sign, she seemed even more downcast. At that moment, Philip, having finished work, hurried over. Mother-in-law, I deeply apologize for the inconvenience my mother caused. There's no need for you to apologize, Philip. Please, look up. Philip, still with his head down, continued his tale. Actually, mom, mother-in-law was jealous of your shop. She envied you because she couldn't do it herself. I never imagined she'd go this far to harass you. I'm truly sorry. Mom was taken aback, unaware that mother-in-law felt this way about her. Mother-in-law was envious because people liked mom, and she even opened up her own store. Unlike mom, mother-in-law wasn't good with people. She often had conflicts with others, leading to multiple incidents in the past. She always resented those who seemed better off than her, spreading rumors and even getting into altercations. Every time she caused trouble, father and I stepped in, but this time, it's unforgivable. Philip contacted father-in-law and asked him to bring mother-in-law to the store. Shortly after reaching out, father-in-law, almost dragging mother-in-law, arrived at the shop. I apologize for my wife's selfish actions. We will cover all the expenses. Apologize, now! Father-in-law urged mother-in-law. However, mother-in-law sulked and pouted. You don't need to pay. Philip sold all the lunchboxes at his office, thankfully, so we didn't end up at a loss. Mom declined their offer. Upon hearing this, mother-in-law exploded in anger. You think your son like that? Just because you own a store doesn't mean you're above everyone. Mother-in-law's face turned red as she shouted. Philip was supposed to stay with us. This is so infuriating. The sight of mother-in-law shouting in blind rage was unsettling. Father-in-law tried his best to calm her down, but she was beyond control. Just then, a regular customer, noticing the commotion, walked in. The customer recognized that the disruptor was the fresh harvest grocer's mother-in-law. With father-in-law, the customer helped restrain mother-in-law. Watching this unfold, a distressed mom stood up and addressed mother-in-law sternly. I can't tolerate you causing a scene and bothering our customers. You act all high and mighty for such a small store. At mother-in-law's words, mom's anger exploded. Who do you think you are acting all high and mighty? If you feel that way, fine. I'll end our business agreement with your store. What? Wait, what did you just say? Did you not hear me? I said I'm ending our agreement with your store. As mom declared this, father-in-law immediately became frantic. No, anything but that. Father-in-law desperately didn't want to sever the business contract with mom. In truth, the business of fresh harvest grocers, which had been running for many years, and stocked fresh vegetables had been declining year by year. Though fresh harvest grocers provided quality produce, they weren't meeting the community's needs. Recently, the number of apartments and single individuals, including students, had grown in the area. Additionally, several big supermarkets had started to emerge. With more people looking to buy cheaper vegetables at supermarkets, fresh harvest grocers saw a gradual decline in customers. Despite fresh harvest grocers' widespread reputation, they couldn't sell a large variety of veggies at low prices like major supermarkets. Therefore, having small businesses like Mom's continuously purchasing vegetables was something father-in-law greatly appreciated. Terminating that contract was the last thing father-in-law, the business owner, wanted. I beg you, please, reconsider the contract. I'll talk to my wife about her behavior. Why does it matter? It's just a small store, like mine. You always act like this! It's because of that attitude that we've lost customers! You need to reflect on your actions! Not only was mother-in-law rude to mom, but she was also often curt with other customers. She sometimes made unnecessary comments, leading some customers to feel uncomfortable and decide not to return to Fresh Harvest Grocers. To think you can't even understand when it's spelled out for you! And to behave this way towards Philip's mother-in-law? It's unforgivable! Mother, Adeline, 
I deeply apologize for my wife's rudeness. Biting his lip and holding back his emotions, father-in-law grabbed mother-in-law's arm and left the store. Mother-in-law never apologized to mom in the end. Later on, Philip visited mom's store with a big smile on his face. Anything good happen? Well, my parents got divorced. Since mother left, the customers have been returning, and the business is slowly stabilizing. It feels like a troublemaker is gone. Father-in-law, fed up with mother-in-law's lack of remorse, decided to divorce. But mother-in-law didn't accept the divorce easily. She impulsively initiated divorce mediation, but in court, she only made self-centered remarks. She rudely addressed the family mediation committee, which put her at a disadvantage in the mediation she started. She had no allies and the divorce was easily granted. Father-in-law seemed relieved that the divorce didn't take much effort. Now, he has no contact with his ex-mother-in-law, and their relationship is completely severed. Now, without mother causing any more trouble, I can't stand causing you any more inconvenience. Philip seemed to feel a weight lifted, recalling all the past troubles with mother-in-law. Philip, I'm looking forward to our continued relationship. Mom was carefully prepping the vegetables from fresh harvest grocers. In reality, she hadn't terminated the contract and continued to buy from them. No matter how bad mother-in-law's attitude was, mom genuinely loved the produce from Fresh Harvest grocers. The pasty vegetables were popular with customers, enhancing the reputation of Fresh Harvest grocers. Because of this, some regular patrons specifically came for their produce. Promoting Fresh Harvest grocers, mom's store became very significant for father-in-law. Moreover, there was more good news. The lunchboxes sold to Philip's company were a hit among employees, leading to more requests. Thanks to that, mom began selling lunchboxes at noon. The nutritionally balanced lunchboxes were popular, especially among younger locals. With good sales and affordable pricing, nothing was left unsold. She also received bulk orders from Philip's large company, and though busy, mom joyfully cooked. Years later, her shop still thrived. She could afford to hire part-time workers, easing her burden. A woman, fond of mom's cooking, came to apprentice. I never thought I'd become a master. It's embarrassing to call myself that. Fulfilling her dream of having her own shop, mom's next dream was to sustain it. She thought of entrusting her dream to this woman. As mom adeptly taught the apprentice, she indeed looked like a master chef. I want to keep enjoying mom's cooking, so I wholeheartedly support her dream of continuity for her shop. 